Hey, man. Watch out! It's a woodpecker from space! Hey guys, welcome back to the sculpture. And as you can see, I pretty much am done with the sculpture. There are little things that I can do here and there, just clean it up. But so far, I think I'm pretty pleased with the sculpture. And it is nice that I took a figure, at least I think so, and I made it more like a sci-fi sort of sculpture. So at this time, the only thing I'm gonna be doing is letting it dry, and so when you finish a water-based clay without an armature, you can let it dry and it's going to dry overnight and it'll become very hard and it could potentially like fracture different parts. I definitely have to remove these wooden rods because the purpose that we use these wooden rods was to hold the arm and build an armature with the um, so it could support all the weight because you know it is a lot of weight on this head you might not think it because uh we're the clay dry in various rates but if you leave these little uh, wooden rods in there one of the things that could happen is that the clay now all the water is going to be evaporating and it's going to shrink it's going to get much harder and you want to remove this before it gets this hard and I have one in the head one over here in the arm and another one here in the other arm and that is something that we're going to be removing you don't even have to cover up that hole and it probably will help you not to cover the hole because once you fire it the air escaping from the arm is just going to be moved out and then afterwards you can put like a little bit of a plumber's put putty on it and seal it and then you paint it you patina it you make it look like what the prep and the fixing of things so here is that stick and you can see like i removed a little bit from down here so that's what we're going to do right now is just kind of close it up just take some clay while i'm working on it i did make changes i didn't copy the sculpture entirely the way it was when I first started sculpting, I thought, you know, like I wanted to capture the individual likeness of the model. And then later on, you find out why. What's the purpose? Is the model important? The thing is, the model is just a vehicle for expression so you can do something else. So that is why I decided to do a satyr sort of theme. It just came to me. It didn't really require much. Um, I don't like the models not paying me of course if you have a uh, portrait that you're doing you want to be a little bit more accurate with the likeness and everything but because this is a work that's supposed to be mythological it doesn't matter nobody's going to care but i do find that postspace.com and i'm not getting paid for that postspace.com is a really good website for getting images for sculptors it's got like references in like a 360 degree they take overhead shots this one didn't have an overhead shot but uh, the newer uh, photos that they're putting up they do have those overhead shots and close-ups so if you require a little bit more detail as most sculptors do postspace.com the newer edition of photos are much better this one's an older photo uh, photo reference so the megapixels was very low and i wish it was newer you need quite a bit more megapixels because one of the things that i do is i zoom into the reference so i can really like look at the arm and things like that so that's a downside of picking the old versions of postspace.com's uh, references but the new ones are much better and they do take like photos of legs feet uh, uh, arms and uh, faces so it's much better so with this one i started out with a figure you know the figure is the vehicle for expression but i decided to change it up later towards the end and i did this without an armature 
And it's very difficult to do something without an armature because a lot of people have these hem fisted waves of sculpting. So if you are leaning something uh, as this is, it requires you to constantly be pushing up and constantly be making adjustments because gravity and the clay tend to push everything down. The way to go about it is to use sticks like this, the way I use them, and I put them throughout the sculpture just so it, it dries consistently. In the beginning, there's a lot of engineering that goes into the sculpting part, and I think that's the part that I struggle with the most. Once I get the figure and the, what I want, uh, the sculpting process comes pretty easy. It's only a matter of taking your time to do things very carefully. But I am kind of pleased with this. I, I don't think it's um, gotten any favorable reviews online, but you know, for me, I think this will look really nice. Um, it is difficult to sell sculptures, especially figure sculptures, and especially male figure sculptures. So, you, most likely if you're a sculptor and you are not well known, you're never going to sell this. So, I did things as I wanted. I didn't do it because I thought somebody might like it. Because this is a very polarizing sort of thing, and a lot of people might not even um, be interested in this sort of theme, but I thought it was cool. The um, things to keep in mind is that it's a balancing act without an armature, and you are going to be sacrificing some of the dynamic pose, but I think it's very well done considering there is no armature inside. And the best thing about water-based clay is that you can fire this, you can make this into a permanent sculpture, without making a mold of it. When you make a mold of something, you can make multiple copies and everything, and it's a really nice thing, but the problem is it's very cost prohibited for a lot of artists, and you have to know another step, which is the mold making process, and that's something I struggle with as well. And also, if you don't have a lot of space in your studio, uh, mold making tends to be very messy and very dangerous because you have all of these chemicals. The best thing about water-based clay is that it's just a normal, natural process. You can make your own clay if you want to just by digging a hole in your backyard if you have the minerals in, in your um, soil, and most people do. There's like clay underneath the topsoil. Uh, but the problem is with that sort of system is that it just uh, requires a lot of sifting through, removing all the rocks. That is why it's better to get clay, but this is cheap. You can go to like a lake, a river, and dig up the clay yourself and do your own. So, <clears throat> a lot of times people were asking me about what type of clay this is. This is very, it's what there is in this area. It's called Virginia Red. And the thing you wanna like get, you wanna get low fire, uh, red clay, or you can get white clay, there's gray clay, it doesn't really matter, it's what's in the soil. But I like red clay, the way it looks, it looks very traditional. I also like white clay, because you can see the values a lot better. But red clay, <clears throat> I think it tends to look a lot more classical. But if you go from location to location, geography to geography, you'll see different types of reds, and that's normal. It's whatever is in the soil. This Virginia red has got a lot of red oxide in the soil, so that's why the color is this. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can get this clay with or without grog, and grog is a really good thing if you're starting out in the beginning because it's like this, um, it's like little bits of fired clay that is added to the clay. So as you're working, there's like this sandy consistency. And the reason people like that for sculpture is that firing is a lot easier. Like uh, you can put it in a kiln, you don't have to worry too much about things blowing up. But with this, you do have to worry about things blowing up because there is no grog, and grog helps the firing process but also tends to dry things out a little bit too much for my liking. And if I'm doing details on the face or something and you're using a brush, um, it tends to like move like little bits of sandy sort of deposits, the grog on the surface and it'll scratch it. So that's kind of like a downside, but it's a good downside because most likely 
this firing is going to be it's probably going to develop some cracks it's going to maybe even break and i'll have to put it together towards the end it's never like a full 100 percent um you know approval from the kiln you could always mess this up and that's unfortunate when you when you go to the firing process in the kiln you want to fire this very slowly uh, it's not like pottery pottery you can like throw it in there because it's so thin and it'll fire almost always without breaking but because this is very thick and it's like one inch thick on each side and it's hollow it needs to be fired very very slowly and that's what happens when you take it to a ceramics place they fire at the same speed that they do pottery and that's a bad thing so normally you want to take it to a place that has fired sculptures before because you don't want this to be blowing up <clears throat> as far as the details of the um, the ram's horns and the tail i just kind of made it up um, for the tail I looked up horse tails because I thought they were like nicer or bull tails but there is an anatomy to it there is bones inside and then eventually it becomes just I guess muscle what you need to do is look at the details first and have your reference up it's the same thing for ram horns I looked at various uh, shapes and ram horns are very intricate and you learn a lot from just observing this sort of stuff but this is pretty much what the sculpture looks like the next step is going to be just letting it dry letting it slowly air dry and then after it dries for a while we're going to fire it i tend to fire sculptures in the winter because you know it's just so hot in the summer here in dc that you want to fire this when it's cold so that's it guys that's the satyr sculpture i hope you enjoyed it there is lots of videos on the channel of me doing the sculpture with much more detail but this is the conclusion of the sculpture i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video